So in this lesson, we're going to be solving literal equations. So our, the learning target is to solve literal equations for given variables and convert temperatures. The success criteria is I can use properties of equality to rewrite literal equations, and I can use formula to convert temperatures. An equation that has two or more variables is called a literal equation. To rewrite a literal equation, solve for one variable in terms of the other variables. So in this example, we want to solve the equation 2y plus 5x equals 6 for y. So I'm going to rewrite my equation right here. And I want to solve for y here. So what we do is we, we treat everything else like it's not a variable here. So we basically just want to get rid of all of the other terms that are on the same side as y and then cancel out any other operations that are happening. So in 2y plus 5x, I want to get rid of this positive 5x term, so I'm going to subtract 5x on both sides. So now these 5x terms are going to cancel out. You can cross them out if you want. You don't need to if you don't want to. I'm going to bring down my 2y, bring down my equal sign, and then we can either write it as 6 minus 5x, which is just going to stay there because they're not like terms. So you can either write it like 6 minus 5x, but it's not a bad idea to get in the habit of writing it in the reverse order. So you can also write it like negative 5x, and then we want to figure out if the 6 is uh, positive or negative. It's obviously positive, so then I would do plus 6. If it was negative 6, we'd do minus 6 here. Uh, and the reason I'm getting you into this habit is because um, in the future, this uh, having the x term first is going to be very helpful. But for now, you can do either way. Anyway, the next step that I see that I have to do, is, I'm going to scroll up as I say this, is I have 2 times y. To cancel out multiplication by 2, I just have to divide by 2. Now, here's where it gets tricky. When I'm dividing by 2 on the left side, there's only one term on the left side, so that's totally fine. But on the right side, there's multiple terms. Dividing on both sides is the exact same thing as dividing every single term on both sides, aka every single term in the equation. Terms are broken up by addition right here. So um, I'm going to divide 2 to all the terms here. So negative 5x over 2, and then divide this positive 6 over 2. Okay. So now these 2s for our y are going to cancel out. So I just get y. And then I can't simplify negative 5 halves x anymore. I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 5 over 2 and then have the x on the side. Having the x on the side or the x on the top are the exact same thing. So this term right here and this term are literally identical. And then here, plus 6 over 2. Well, positive 6 over 2 is positive 3. This simplifies. So I am going to simplify this. So this is plus 3. So now I want to see, okay, do I have my variable that I was trying to solve, which is y, all by itself, and I do, it's right here. And then is the other side of the equation simplified, negative 5 over 2x plus 3? There's nothing else I can do here. Um, so yeah, this is simplified. You might have also gotten y equals 3 minus 5 halves x if you did it the other way. So um, both of these would be correct answers. I recommend having your x term first, but if you have this when it just says solve for y, that's totally fine as well. The formula for the surface area S of a cone is S equals pi r squared plus pi r l. Solve the formula for the slant height l. Notice the l is in cursive, so you don't confuse the l with a 1. So we, we know we need to find l. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did in, in the last example. I am going to rewrite my equation. S equals pi r squared plus pi r l. Okay, And I want to isolate this l. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get rid of every other term that does not have an L in it. So I'm going to get rid of this term, pi r squared, because it does not have an L in it. And it's positive right here. So I'm going to get rid of this plus pi r squared by subtracting pi r squared on both sides. Now, s and pi r squared are not like terms, so I'm just going to rewrite it, write this like s minus pi r squared, and then bring my equal sign down. And then the only term left on the right side is pi r l. Now I only have one term on the right side, and that's pi r l. And I want to see what's happening to l, because I want to solve for l. Well, I'm multiplying by r and multiplying by pi. So to cancel out multiplication by pi and r, I'm just going to divide by pi and r on both sides. And remember, dividing on both sides means divide every single term by pi and r. So I'm going to divide the s by pi and r, and I'm going to divide the minus pi r squared by pi and r. Okay. 
So the pi's and the r's on the right side cancel, so you can cross them off if you like. So I just have L on the right side. And then over here, let's see if we can simplify any fractions. Well, S over pi r, I can't simplify that. There's nothing I can cancel out. So I'm just going to rewrite this as S over pi r. And then uh, this is going to stay negative. So I have the minus sign here. But I see I have a pi on the top and the bottom. Okay, So I'm going to cancel those out as well. So now I'm just going to rewrite r squared over r. Now, for, for what we've gone over now, you can leave it like this, but in the future you'll learn how to uh, cancel this out. So right now if you had this as one of your answers, that would be totally fine. But you also could have s over pi r minus r equals l as well. If you had this, if you knew that you could cancel out an r here, then you could do that as well. But for now, both are fine. So we're going to talk about temperature conversion right now. A formula for converting from degrees Fahrenheit F to degrees Celsius C is C equals 5 ninths times quantity F minus 32. So we're going to solve this formula for F. Okay. So I want to find F, and I know I have C equals 5 ninths times the quantity F minus 32. What I could do is I could distribute this okay, and then um, get rid of whatever term I have left. But I know that if I multiply 5 ninths by negative 32, I'm not going to get a, an integer or a whole number. Um, so what I'm going to do actually instead is I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 5 ninths. And the reciprocal of 5 ninths is 9 fifths. So I'm just going to rewrite this. C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 9 fifths. And remember, the order of multiplication does not matter. So if I put the 9 fifths over here, even though there's this F minus 32 quantity in between, these are still going to cancel out. Okay, So the 9s cancel, the 5s cancel. So on the right side, all I have left is F minus 32. And you can take it out of the parentheses if you would like. You can leave them in there if you want, but that's probably going to confuse you if you, uh, if you aren't really sure. So anyway, and then on the left side, I have 9 fifths C. So now, when I scroll down, I, st I, want, I still want to see what's happening to f. f's my variable I'm looking for. So I see that I'm subtracting 32. I have this negative 32 term. So to cancel out negative 32, I can add 32 on both sides. So now I have f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. And now we are done. We are completely simplified. If you went and distributed this 5 ninths up here, uh, you'd, you'd still get the correct answer, but this way that I showed you is much easier. So this is the temperature to find how many degrees Fahrenheit something is if you have uh, the measurement in Celsius degrees. So now we're done. So we want to figure out what is the greater temperature here. Um, we have the sun at 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we have lightning at 30,000 degrees Celsius. So I've included the formula here. Uh, and it, to be honest, it does not matter what formula you use. You can e either use this one or the one that we just solved for in the last example, as long as we convert them to the same uh, temperature unit here. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius, okay? Because this equation is telling me what the degrees Celsius are in. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this as C equals 5 ninths times 11,000 minus 32. Okay. Now, I'm going to um, do this out really quickly. 11,000 minus 32 is going to be 10,968 times 5 ninths. And what I could do is I could multiply this out right here, 5 times 10,968, and then divide this whole thing by 9. Um, but right away, I see that uh, I am multiplying 10,968 by a fraction that is smaller than 1. So 5 ninths is smaller than 1. So that means when I multiply this, this number by this number, this 10,968 is going to decrease. So I know for a fact that the sun's temperature um, in Celsius is going to be much less than 30,000 degrees Celsius. So I know that the sun has a lower temperature and the lightning has the greater temperature. So I'm going to circle the lightning for the greater temperature. If we wanted to double check that, I could go to my calculator. So I'm going to plug in 5 ninths times 11,000 
minus 32. And I see that this value turns into 6,093.3 repeating. So if I go back over and rewrite this as C equals 6,093, I'll put in a third because 0.3 repeating is a third. So this is how many degrees Celsius this Fahrenheit temperature is. And this is far less than lightning. So I know for a fact that the lightning has a greater temperature. And now we're done.